We produce more food now than at any other point in human history, yet it's making us sicker and it's destroying the very land we depend on to survive. 99% of animal agriculture today is raised on factory farms, crowded, unnatural systems that pollute the land, water, and air. The world's topsoil is vanishing in front of our eyes, and so is the nutrition in our food. But there is another way, a system that rebuilds the soil, brings animals back into harmony with the land, and produces food that actually nourishes. It's called regenerative agriculture. It's not just the future of farming, it's our only hope of survival. In this video, you'll learn how modern farming practices have stripped our food and soil of life, and how regenerative agriculture offers a way to restore both. You'll see why animals are essential to healthy ecosystems, how soil health impacts human health, and what it will actually take to rebuild a food system that sustains us all. The last 70 years have witnessed a rapid expansion of the global population. And if we didn't want the world to starve, farming had to come up with a solution. That solution was scale. Large farms, synthetic fertilizers and pesticides, heavy machinery and monoculture crops. But the problem is, this scale comes with a serious sacrifice. The food we're eating today isn't made to be as healthy and as nutritious as possible. It was designed to be grown as cheaply and efficiently as possible. And the environment, it was an afterthought. So what does our modern food system look like today? And what does that mean for you? For most of human history, our lives were tied to the land, planting, growing, and harvesting our own food. Today, that has changed. As our society industrialized, so did our food production. Small farms were replaced with large multinational corporations controlling thousands of acres at a time. Farms growing a wide diversity of crops and animals were replaced with endless fields of monocrops, mile after mile of corn and soy and wheat. Meanwhile, the majority of humans moved to cities, working jobs in an ever-expanding economy with no connection to how their food was grown. So what happened? The quality and nutrition of our food has declined rapidly. Today's fruits and vegetables aren't what they used to be. Since 1950, they've lost up to 90% of their nutrients in some cases. But why would a carrot be any less nutritious than one from 70 years ago? It all starts with soil. Over time, our soils have become dry, compacted, and void of the microorganisms and nutrients that make our food healthy. The living ground that nourishes both our plants and the animals that depend on them. So how did our soil get this way? In conventional agriculture, farmers till the soil to break it up for planting crops and controlling weeds. But soil isn't just a mound of lifeless dirt. It's a delicate living ecosystem of microbes, fungi, and earthworms that recycle nutrients, aerate the soil, and keep plants growing. Tilling destroys this ecosystem. In nature, soil is never left bare or uncovered. Picture a forest. The earth is never exposed. The forest floor is covered with leaves, plants, moss, and wood, always protecting the soil beneath. When we till, loose, exposed soil gets dried out by the sun, washed away with rain or blown to dust by wind. And without healthy soil, crops can't access nutrients to grow. This forces farmers to rely on synthetic fertilizers to replace the disappearing nutrients in the soil. And on top of that, the lack of biodiversity in monoculture farming leads the crops to be vulnerable to pests and diseases. Once again, farmers are forced to rely on synthetic chemicals, this time pesticides and herbicides. While chemical agriculture allows us to bear large harvests from rapidly declining soils, it also comes at a deadly cost. The environment. Remember how a compacted soil struggles to absorb and trap water? Now rainfall causes chemical runoff from fertilizers, pesticides, and herbicides into our rivers and streams, creating dead zones where nothing can live. The Gulf of Mexico now has one of the largest dead zones on Earth, mostly caused by fertilizer runoff from farms along the Mississippi River. And each year, things are getting worse. After the season of growth and harvest, fields are often left bare. With wind and rain, another layer of topsoil gets blown away and washed away. Farmers work to correct this by tilling and refertilizing the next season, simply repeating the cycle. But what's the problem with this? Our topsoil is finite, and according to the UN, in the last 100 years, we've lost about one-third of the world's topsoil. 
Think of soil like a bank account. Industrial farming is always withdrawing, never depositing. If current trends continue, we may only have 60 years of harvest left before our soils are too depleted to support agriculture. At some point, the account runs dry. And in many parts of the world, we're already close to bankruptcy. But there is a solution. If we're losing all of this precious topsoil, it's helpful to ask, how did we get this 20 to 30 inches of black gold in the first place? Animals. Today's media has taught us that animal agriculture is the greatest destructive force acting against our planet. In truth, animals are the solution to many of our issues. The problem is that we are stewarding animals in a very backwards way. Just as farmers have relied on scale to grow vast monocultures of plant crops, the same methods were used with animals. Ever hear of factory farms? Factory farms are industrial facilities where thousands of animals are crammed together, fed grain diets, and treated like production units. They produce cheap meat and milk, but at enormous cost to animal welfare, the environment, and human health. And in the United States today, 99% of animals are produced in this way. But it doesn't have to be like this. In natural ecosystems, animals play a critical role. Herds of grazing animals once roamed the plains and grasslands of the world. Bison in North America, wildebeest in Africa. As they grazed, bison broke up the soil surface, enabling rain to infiltrate more easily. Their grazing stimulated new grass growth, which sequestered carbon deeper underground. Their manure fertilized the soil, and their constant movement prevented overgrazing. This natural process enriched the soil, promoted biodiversity, and aided carbon storage. And this cycle created some of the richest soils on Earth. In the Great Plains in North America, thousands of years of bison grazing created 20 to 30 inches of nutrient-rich topsoil. But thanks to modern farming practices in these fields, there's now just 6 to 8 inches left. A staggering reduction. Luckily, there is a solution, a system for growing plants and raising animals in a way that works with nature instead of against it. That system is regenerative agriculture, using timeless practices to rebuild soil health, increase biodiversity, and improve water cycles. It doesn't just maintain the land, it improves it. It's farming with nature instead of against it, turning farms into living ecosystems that get healthier, more productive, and more resilient year after year. Regenerative agriculture can be explained with six simple tenets. Number one, minimizing or eliminating tillage. Eliminating tillage keeps the soil structure intact, protecting microbes, fungi, and worms. Also preventing carbon loss and soil erosion. Number two, planting cover crops. Planting cover crops year round ensures the earth is always protected. Cover crop roots feed soil organisms, prevent erosion, and add organic matter back to the soil. Number three, increase crop diversity. Instead of monocrops, regenerative practices focus on polycultures, a variety of plants. This increases biodiversity, which breaks pest and disease cycles, boosts pollination, and improves resilience. Number four, integrating animals with adaptive grazing. Regenerative agriculture incorporates animals back into the picture with managed rotational grazing. Animals are kept in tight groups and are moved frequently. This mimics wild herds in nature, stimulating plant regrowth and refertilizing soil with manure to help build new topsoil. Number five, agroforestry and perennial plants. Trees, shrubs, and perennials are planted alongside annual crops. This provides shade, wind protection, wildlife habitat, and a long-term soil enrichment, simulating what natural ecosystems look like, but in a farm environment. Number six, Living roots are kept in the ground rather than harvesting and leaving fields barren. Living roots are kept in the ground continually, feeding soil microbes year-round. This improves water infiltration, reduces drought stress, and builds soil carbon. Regenerative agriculture is a farming system that mimics nature, allowing humans to grow food in harmony with the land. And the best part? We can actually reverse the damage that has been done. In one farmer's lifetime, topsoil can be regenerated, and nutrient levels can increase by an astounding amount. Gabe Brown from Brown's Ranch was able to take his farm from just 1.7% organic matter in 1993 to 7.9% 7 in 2023. An equivalent of six inches of topsoil gained in 30 years, 
his farm went from being able to absorb half an inch of rainfall in an hour to now 32 inches today. And his net profit per acre increased from $17 to 158. He credits all of this to regenerative practices, and in particular, incorporating animals with adaptive grazing. So these methods return farming to a system that gives back more than it takes, leading to healthier soil, healthier food, and a more resilient planet. In the conventional model, the only way a farm can be profitable is with massive scale. In the regenerative model, small family farms can increase output and maintain a diverse offering of fruits, vegetables, and animal products across seasons. For the consumer, healthier food is available. Foods grown in rich living soil contain more vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, not to mention the reduction in pesticides and herbicides. Meat, milk, and eggs from animals raised on pasture are higher in healthy fats and nutrients. And for animals, regenerative farming means a life worth living. No crowded feedlots, no cages, cattle graze on open pasture, chickens scratch in the grass, pigs root in the soil. Each species expresses their natural behavior, and in doing so, they give back to the land. As for the environment, healthy farms act like sponges, absorbing rain and restoring natural water cycles. Polluted runoff diminishes, rivers run clearer, and aquifers are replenished. And perhaps most importantly, regenerative agriculture restores our connection to the earth. It shifts farming away from an extractive, industrial model toward one that is circular, resilient, and healing. So while industrial farming has taken so much from our soils, our food, and our health, there is a clear path forward. And here's the good news. You can be a part of that change. Every choice we make about what food we buy sends a signal. Support local farmers whenever you can. Visit a local farmer's market. Learn how they raise their food. Look for regenerative and pasture-raised products, from eggs and meat to vegetables and fruit. Most importantly, know where your food comes from. The future of farming isn't just in the hands of farmers. It's in the hands of all of us who eat every day. If we choose food grown by a system that heals the land, we help create a cycle that works for people, animals, and the planet. The way we farm today doesn't have to be the way we farm tomorrow. Together, we can make it regenerative.